Welcome to my April bullet journal. This month's folklore theme is the universally loved ladybug. So we're creating an illustrated cover page, a habit tracker, and lots more. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back. It is time for our April plan with me. And oh my gosh, am I glad that it is April because I really need spring to come this year. So let's take a quick look at my March setup. We did a structured weekly layout. I like to use a little gift tag there. It kind of acts as a bookmark for the week that I'm working in. Our theme for March was the wise owl bringer of prophecy. And we did this graphic floral cover page. If you are new here, our theme for this year is folklore. And my journal kind of has a folk art vibe, lots of animals lots of florals. Any of these themes would be good for any month of the year. We did Henny Penny and the Rabbit in the Moon and the Wise Owl and I'll tell you about this month's theme in a moment. For March we did a nice brain dump, something I often need, a large calendar, structured weekly layout and then I'm going to skip ahead, leave myself some more pages and we will work on the April cover page with our theme, the Ladybug. This is going to be a fun one and just a quick reminder, if you would like to get the cover page printable, that's available over over on my Patreon. It's just two bucks a month to be a member or $22 for the year and you get weekly bonus content like the planner printable. You can use it as a cover page or just paste it in your journal as is. And there's also a worksheet this week showing you how to draw a ladybug. But anyways, speaking of drawing a ladybug, let's get to it. To begin the cover page, I sketched a rectangle, nice large margin, a little bit larger at the bottom. And then I flipped the page upside down. And here's how we're gonna draw the ladybug. We'll start with her shell. It's kind of a imperfect uh, half circle. Make it a little rounded along the bottom, comes to a bit of a point. And then she's got three legs. The first one points forward, the last two point to the back, and you can make them a little thicker towards the shell. Put a large highlight on that shell and a few dots. And then another small circle for the, semicircle for the head with just a tiny little uh, circle coming off of that. And then the two little, antennae or feelers or whatever those are. The nice thing is she's going to be hanging upside down off this swooping line of grass, but we don't have to draw her upside down. You just have to flip the page. And then once you flip it back, if the ladybug looks at all funny, you can make some tiny changes. But that's the main part of this cover page. Now we get into the stuff we're comfortable with, which is just some floral illustration. You can just draw some grass, some leaves. I'm going to focus on these little kind of like a messy daisy or chamomile flower where I'm drawing the round stamen first and then I just do a semicircle of petals kind of surrounding it. And you can draw some lines where those petals will sit. Give yourself a guide. Sketch three or four or five flowers, maybe draw in one that's not on an angle. So you do the petals the whole way around. Give yourself a guide first. One or two of the flowers could be a little smaller. You know, it's that simple. And then we're gonna frame everything with lots of leaves and grass. And that's the basis for, I think, what is gonna be a really striking cover page. So at this point, if you wanna grab a fine liner, I'm using the uh, 0.5 millimeter nib. This is the Mulatto Black Liner. And I'm going to start with the Ladybug and I'm just going over her drawing in, or filling in my contour drawing. I'm going to, you know, do a really dark true black on the head and the legs and the spot and then the rest will use a little bit of line shading. So do the same thing, that semicircle that's very perfectly imperfect for the body. You've got the head with the feelers. Keep the spots fairly small and be sure to leave that highlight. You don't want to um, draw anything where that highlight should be to show that the shell, you know, is hard and shiny. And then I think I'm going to flip her back upside down here so I can work right side up on the illustration. And I want to add some line shading to show that the shell is a darker color. It's that rich red, but of course, I'm keeping it black and white, uh, at least for the cover page this month. So just some thin lines that curve with the shell, just curving slightly. And then we're going to add more lines near the head and near the butt, <laughs> near the tail, I don't know, uh, just to show that the um, shell is circular. So where that highlight is, is the brightest spot down near the legs and near the head. Those are the darkest areas. And uh, yeah, 
if you leave that highlight, it really will help the entire ladybug to look really rounded and, you know, semi-realistic. We're not going for like super realism. With that done, we're on our way to working with the subjects that we're comfortable with, at least for me, and that is flowers and leaves. So for these um, daisies or black-eyed Susans, I want to start with the stamen. And for the stamen, I do a cl like little clusters of lines and they all come together to fill in the center of the flower and it looks really bristly and uh, it's just a simple way to, to start that flower off. Then we're going to continue our contour drawing and we're going to go over all of the petals making sure to wiggle that pen a little bit so that the petals uh, don't look too smooth. We want perfectly imperfect. We want them to look a little ruffled, make the ends either pointed or squared or, you know, make every petal just slightly different. And then we will take that same pen and we're just going to do some thin lines down the center of some or most of those petals. And that just gives them a nice uh, textured look to show that they're not too smooth or too flat. And then we just keep on keeping with that contour drawing, going over the stems and thickening them, giving them a little bit of texture, putting a weird curve on some of them. We're going to do long, thin leaves that blend in with the grass and come to a nice fine point. And that looks nice with the ladybug who is hanging off that long, thin, swooping piece of grass that is kind of framing uh, the illustration. And the folklore of the ladybug is a worldwide thing. So they're known and loved worldwide and it's sort of universally accepted that to kill one is bad luck. And the name the ladybug comes from uh, way, way back <laughs> in the middle ages, the farmers were worried their crop would be destroyed by insects. So they prayed to the Virgin Mary and that's when the ladybugs showed up and drove away these other insects, the bad insects, I don't know. <laughs> so they were called the beetle of our lady and then over the years it was ladybird or ladybug and that's how we know them today. At this point in the illustration, my contour drawing is looking good. I thought it was about time to actually go over the rectangle. So I'm using a really thick one millimeter nib pen, not to be confused with the point one. It's a nice weighty black line that really frames the illustration ni nicely. I do have a few petals and leaves going outside of that frame, which I think looks nice. And then contour drawing is done, framing is done. So now let's grab a smaller fine liner. If you remember, I used the point five for the contour drawing. So something like a 0.2 or 0.3 is good for this step, which is the line shading. So what we want to do is just add as much or as little line shading as you like. You could be complete at this point. You don't have to add a lot. I'm adding some thin, delicate lines near the center of each flower and at the end of the petals to show that they're a little bit concave, to show that they're a little bit textured. It helps with the depth and the look and the realness, I guess, of these flowers. And then I kind of think I'm going to go quite heavy on the line shading in this illustration. So kind of get a look at it now. It's a simple illustration. It's the ladybug and some flowers and leaves, but the line shading is really going to take it to a place where it becomes this magical storybook illustration and line shading might look complicated but it's really not you just do a little bit at a time and you build and build so I am you know darkening those petals slightly I'm darkening up the stems and then I start on the leaves all I do with the leaves is follow the shape of each leaf so if the leaf curves up to the right then my lines curve up to the right and I might add more line shading um, at the base of the leaf and at the top or, or in the middle. You know, you can just pick a spot and add a little more line shading. It'll just give the look that that leaf is curved or that it's a little bit textured. And then I'm also going to start adding a whole lot of line shading in and around the flowers to darken up the entire bottom half of the illustration and give the look of this wild, dense field of flowers or meadow. So grab yourself a smaller nib fine liner, that 0.2 millimeter nib will be great for this. And we just do these thin lines reaching up towards the sky, getting a little wispier up above those flowers and getting much denser down here at the bottom. So just go across once, you know, make your wash of lines and then go again and darken up at the bottom at the base and add a few more lines, you know, in the corners and at the bottom. I'm just going for the look of a spring meadow, something that doesn't look like winter. Winter is really clinging 
<laughs> where I'm from in Ontario this year. It just feels like it's not leaving. And we just bought our first home almost a year ago. So we're really not uh, traveling this year. We're just enjoying the house and the winter and the cold weather and the snow. There's so much snow still. We're supposed to be getting rain very soon. So hopefully we won't have like deep snow for much longer. Anyways, if you're in a hot climate, just don't comment. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Um, I did feel like I went and put maybe a little too much line shading on some of the flowers. So I just took a white gel pen and lightened them up a bit, added some highlights. I continued with the line shading. You know, when I started, I didn't know exactly how much line shading I wanted to add. It's one of those fun processes that you just get lost in and you kind of step back from the illustration, take a look. Okay, I need more. I did some thin curving lines at the very top to give the look of, you know, almost like a sunspot right in the middle. And I just had fun with it. At the very end, we can put an April title down here in the middle and she's done. Remember, you you can get this as a printable on Patreon. You can use it as a coloring page or just as is. And there's also a worksheet showing how to draw that ladybug if you need extra guidance. Now moving on, we are going to create a calendar page. This month I'm just doing a single page <laughs> the calendar spread so it's not quite as large as last month um, but what I do is I just sketch it out in pencil then I go over it in pen pulling that pen towards my body so I don't have to use a ruler and I can keep those lines fairly straight. I did a simple all caps title and then I wanted to do something that I was just comfortable with um, Gosh, Sully has not been sleeping well this week. He's normally a pretty good sleeper. And you know, when you're, I don't even feel that tired, but you know, when you're just not yourself, it's like making art just feels impossible. Even though it's enjoyable, I just felt like I was screwing everything up. So I wanted to do something that I was comfortable with. And this kind of branch design is one that I go back to again and again. You just make it as large or as small as you like. Keep adding branches, keep adding leaves. You wiggle that pen a little bit so that the branches aren't straight and the leaves are not smooth. And anywhere you need a little berry, you just pop in one berry or a little cluster. The combination of the tiny, very imperfect leaves and the super small berries, it always just looks so fine and decorative and it's really fun to sketch. You can kind of get lost in it. You don't need to do it in pencil first if you don't want to and you can make it as large as you like I like to kind of curve it with the corner of the page or wrap it around the calendar it's really nice for framing uh, whatever you need to frame whether it's a calendar or part of a weekly layout uh, let me finish off this calendar since I didn't even put in the dates or days of the week we'll do that and then I think I'm just going to keep adding like I said, you can kind of get lost in it a little bit. And if you're struggling to feel like you're making something good or, you know, you feel like, oh, my journal doesn't look the way I want it to. This is one of those illustrations that is hard to screw up. Don't be too hard on yourself. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Um, but you just keep doodling. Just go with it. You can add a little bit to it every day. You don't have to do this all at once. Remember, I set up my journal, you know, because I'm in a video, making a video about it. But you can set up your journal or especially do the decorations as the month progresses. Now, here's a little color for all the color lovers out there. <laughs> Grab a red or crimson marker and we're just going to do a whole bunch of little circles or oval shapes. I'm sure you can see where this is going and we'll make them into tiny cute little ladybugs. So I'm just adding a little black semicircle and, you know, put some dots <laughs> on them, have them facing all different directions. That's the only thing I would suggest. And it comes together really quickly and it's a fun color way to decorate your calendar page this month. If you chose a really dark red like me and you almost can't even see the dots on the ladybugs, a way to make them pop is to add that little highlight, you know, just like we did on our cover page illustration. Just give a little, a little glaze of white to that red shell and it's going to look so much more jaunty. I don't know. <laughs> 
I'm also gonna do one little bug just climbing along the top of the calendar. She's cute. Okay, and that's that. Let's move on and I've got a fun habit tracker to share. For this spread, I'm gonna turn the journal the other way. I don't think I've done that yet this year. <laughs> Something different and an easy way to fit more calendars because the way I'm gonna lay out this habit tracker is with a bunch of basically April calendars. So you can see I've got six little monthly calendars here. Have I said calendars enough? Uh, but you could do eight, you could do nine. I'm gonna take a small fine liner and I am going to draw them in. Now, each calendar that you see represents another habit and the calendar itself is where I will track uh, that habit. So lately I've cut out uh, sugar and caffeine. I'm trying to get my hormones in check as I am almost two years postpartum, but I'm still breastfeeding and as I cut down on breastfeeding I'm sure many of you know like just it really wreaks havoc on your body and your hormones and all those changes so and I also was a major uh, green tea drinker and I basically relied on like fruit snacks and uh, candy to get me through the day so I've cut caffeine except for um, I like I still drink herbal tea and a bit of white tea uh, like one white tea I'm down to. It's very sad, but it's also been very good. And I've cut sugar. So that's like the kind of stuff I wanna track. I'm also going to track if I'm going out for a walk as the spring weather comes, I like to get outside every day. So now that I've got my six calendars in here, I just write the habit at the top. No caffeine, um, no phone for the first 30 minutes of the day or whatever it is that you're tracking. And then you're just going to um, mark each day if you did it or not. It's a as simple as that so you could have nine or ten calendars in there whatever you like um, however you set it up you can use the page opposite to simply write habit tracker some sort of title and I'm going to sketch another ladybug we're going to do this one in more of a folk art style so that'll be fun and it won't take quite as long as the um, cover page ladybug with all that line shading gosh it's been a minute since we've done a habit tracker you know as winter ends and I'm trying to get my health in check and my hormonal health in check, it seems like something that I might want to include more often. So if you love a habit tracker or if it's something that you usually include, let me know what kind of stuff are you tracking. I'd love to read about it in the comments. Uh, so we sketched our cutesy little um, ladybug here, just a round bug with his two wings out to the side. I'm coloring it in all black except kind of along the pencil lines. I left a little bit of that white page showing through. You don't have to do that because the trick is you can just thicken up those white lines with your white gel pen. And then we are also going to add just some simple little floral doodles, flowers, leaves. You could skip the leaves and just use flowers like as the dots on the ladybug shell. I think that would be really sweet. So a nice simple illustration for our tracker. Once that's complete, use that eraser, get rid of all those pencil marks. And at this point you could leave it alone or I decided to take my warm gray marker, my best bud, and I'm just gonna write April 2023, something like that up at the top. A good way to do this is to use a brush pen, just do a nice cursive, thicken it up a little bit, and then you can really make it look like you know what you're doing <laughs> with lettering by taking that fine liner and tracing around and just doing a nice, um, like line around it basically. <laughs> the line might have been really difficult to do on its own, right? But when you have the middle section done ahead of time, you get it. Anyways, that's my little ladybug April habit tracker in place. Now let's see if I can remember to use it. So if on the first of the month I don't drink any caffeine, I'm gonna mark it in gray. If I don't eat any sugar, that'll be a miracle and I'll put it, you know, <laughs> I'll mark a little gray mark. Actually, I think I've come a long way in terms of my sugar intake. It's just, you know, it's a journey. Anywho, with that done, let's move right along and we are going to finish up today's video with a weekly layout. I don't like to change my weekly layout every single month. I just find that's a little more creativity than I need in my life. I like to go with what I know at least a couple months in a row. So we're gonna, that's a long way of saying, we're gonna continue with what we did last month. And that is this really structured layout that I've been doing for years and I kind of always go back to it. So you're gonna mark six rectangles along the bottom two pages. Um, if you're working in an Archer and Olive notebook like I am, then they are seven squares across and you can just make them as tall as you like. 
what I use my journal for is mainly like my daily to-do lists. That is the main thing that I do in this journal is just write out my to-do list each and every day and check things off as I go. So if you need a really long, tall box, make it long and tall. Uh, and then you've got this upper margin here where you can do a notes area or you can just do some illustrations, calendar, a small weekly habit tracker, whatever you like. Use um, that brush pen to mark in the dates and maybe give a little highlight to some of those uh, boxes. You could write notes and then put a shadow and then mess it up a million times like I did. But that's what that white gel pen is for, right? Pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish up my little uh, weekly layout with one more ladybug illustration. We start with his shell, sketch that perfectly imperfect uh, semicircle, add a couple legs, thicken them at the top. You're going to do this round area for the head and then another tiny round area off of that with the antennae. Mark a highlight and some spots. That's pretty much it. If you'd like extra guidance with that illustration, remember there is a worksheet this week. So there's double Patreon content. Not only do you get the cover page printable, but there's also a little helpful guide to help you illustrate the ladybug just perfectly so that she looks so cute and pretty and you can use her for your calendar spreads, your weekly layouts, whatever else you want. Head over to patreon.com slash Shada Campbell, <laughs> Shada Campbell, that's my name, to check out um, that worksheet and the planner printable and all the other bonus content. Let me just add a little bit of line shading to this one, although maybe it would have looked cute to have a little bit of color. I can admit that. A little color would be nice, but if you want to practice your line shading with those thin curving lines, this is a good little place to do it. And oh hey friends, if you haven't heard, I've got some big news. This month I am finally launching my own print shop. Yes, so you will be able to purchase prints of the work that you see me producing here on the channel, mainly my watercolor paintings, and I couldn't be more excited about it. I will be talking about it in the videos to come, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel and it wouldn't hurt to follow me on Instagram at Shada Campbell. Let's have a quick flip through of this little journal. We did a really fun cover page this month I think and then our uh, calendar which was just a way for me to just do some doodles <laughs> we've got a habit tracker so that I can be accountable for not eating sugar and no more caffeine and uh, a nice structured weekly layout finally if you would like to print the cover page or the uh, ladybug illustration worksheet that's available on patreon just two bucks a month to join or twenty two dollars for the year go to patreon.com slash Campbell thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.